I mean, I said it all week, Derek King is, there aren't five quarterbacks in the country better than that cat, and that may be too many. Um, he's, he's fantastic. Welcome to another edition of Student of the Game. I'm your boy, Ro, contributor for State of the U, and OG member of the Orange Bowl boys. You just heard it. Lincoln Riley said to Eric King, he's one bad dude. And in a situation where your defense was good, but that opposing quarterback is better, you're going to understand why he made such claims. So let's set up the play. Here you go. 10 set personnel, one running back, two by two look. Now on this two by two look, Houston's going to try to attack this Oklahoma defense by running a mesh concept. What does that mean? You have this slot receiver. He's going to be running a drag from the field to the boundary side. And on the inverse, you have this number two wide receiver on this side. He's going to be running a drag from the boundary to the field. Now watch how well Oklahoma passes this off, even when Houston adds a little wrinkle. First thing you're going to notice, this, this linebacker right here is going to attach to the halfback and run match and run with a man-on-man -man coverage. Now, this is what I like. Here you go. This little variant. Backside chaser is going to go ahead and take this up on a vertical route concept, but look at how well it gets passed off. Right here, they attach up over the top. Mike linebacker takes that initial drag across from the boundary side. This is all covered. But there's backs turned, and anytime you have backs turned, you lose sight of the quarterback. So what was great coverage in the secondary? Well, that ended up still being about a 25 to 30 yard gain. Boom. Creative play design alert. I really like this concept. It's a build off the mesh concept we just saw on the other clip, but here you go. They're going to sell it from this time, 11 set personnel. You're going to have this tight end right here to the boundary who's setting the run strength with this running back over here, and this number two to the field, wide receiver, they're going to be selling the mesh. But hit them with the okey-doke. Just when it looks like they're going to come across to the field, they're going to break back apart. Nice throw right there. We'll get back to that. Nice big long gain. Way to build off the mesh. Way to have a little counter and a wrinkle off of it. Now let's go back and watch the quarterback. One of the things you need to do is, especially when you're going to get blitzed, can you be accurate with the football? Can you be decisive? Can you be quick? And can you lead your receiver so he can get the yards necessary to get a big gain? And let's see what happens. Here comes the blitz. There's the throw on time. In stride. If you throw that a little behind a wide receiver against the blitz, that's getting tackled for a lot less yards. Good play design. Good quarterbacking. Good all the way around, first down. This is one of those instances when you just have the perfect play call. Or maybe you just have a little bit of their tendency. Watch Oklahoma here. Right before the snap, pre-snap movement, they're going to go ahead and take their three defensive down linemen and shift them. Okay. Now, what's the counter by Houston? They're going to take a trips three. There you go. He's coming across the number two in that trip set across the field. Now, it loosened it up. And this is what you're going to have. Perfect. Pin and pull. Pin situation. They're going to go ahead and watch them further away from the quarterback. And there's your pulling lineman. And in this case, a little delayed counter for the quarterback design run. And when you have a Ferrari with feet, into the red zone you go. First down. Man, I just love this view. It's like, it's like being from the perch. Except we're not from the perch anymore. But anyway... You're going to see Oklahoma right here. They're going to go ahead and take their defensive tackle right here, and they're going to slant him inside. When they slant him inside, you're going to have this Oklahoma defensive end go ahead and take this right tackle on the outside. You're going to see that the University of Houston is going to use what's known as slide protection. They're going to slide one way. Obviously, your right tackle kicks out. And then you're going to be on a kind of a conundrum here between the running back and this linebacker right here. On the back end, what you're going to notice, and this is some of the things that De'Aaron King's got to notice post-snap, this looks like it's cover two, right? You have two safeties, but as soon as this play unfolds, this is what defenses can do to you. Watch this right here. Watch this secondary. Watch this safety. Boom. 
He's buzzing high as a quarterback. You know what I know? This changes my sight picture. They're going to a single high safety shell. This ends up just becoming man one. Looked like cover two, but now it's man one. Now at this time, the quarterback's sight picture's changing. He's got a lot of things he's got to process. And do you remember what we got back to earlier when you saw that slide protection? Well, now look at this gaping hole. Oklahoma linebacker senses it. Now he's going to go ahead and try to put pressure on De'Ara King, who escapes it naturally and extends the play. Now, that halfback could have stayed in and essentially ate it as a blocker, but when he comes out, that's the advantage. That's the advantage. Look, you're two for one on the outside. That's what numbers can do. you got to account for the quarterback now in the passing game. A little check down. You get two for one out here. Let's see what happens. Make one person miss. Bang. Is it always rainbows and butterflies? No, of course not. Sometimes quarterbacks, well, they just throw the ball into double coverage. And that's what's going to happen here. But let's try to understand why. With about 5 minutes and 37 seconds left in the third quarter, I will tell you that Houston's ran numerous mesh concepts. To the point, pay attention to the free safety. Because at the snap of the ball, where is he? Yeah, he's patrolling right into the middle of the field. He's thinking something's going to be breaking right there. They're trying to pick up on tendency. But what do I like? Once he notices that this concept, and none of the combos are showing that, watch his hips, watch what he does. Bam. He gets over the top. Now, losing sight of that picture post-snap, you see this look right here? You see the strong safety crashing down? Now you're going to see this post on the backside? Yeah, that's probably the green light to go ahead and hit that, thinking nobody's going to be there except member number 10. Well, he got his back turned and broke up the play. Good awareness by that free safety to understand what was coming, what wasn't coming, and getting involved in the play. Every time I see an inside zone with a bubble, I immediately think of Brad Kaya. And yes, this is a little variant to it considering that they're in a pistol formation. A tight end just came across the formation and set the run strength over here to the field. But I want you to pay attention to this defender right here. Okay? See the steps he's got to go ahead and try to contain this rear portion of the quarterback zone read, right? If the quarterback is able to keep the ball, he's going to be able to get outside. So you're going to see... This is the fake to the halfback, but you also have the threat of the mobile quarterback running out here. This is what was able to suck in number 44 into the formation, allowing a lot more space and cushion for this bubble to happen. It just adds a tertiary aspect to these inside bubbles, and really effective. Picks up the first down, especially on third and three when you need it. You've heard me say it on this series before, but it's the little things that lead to big plays. And in this case, nothing fancy about the combo at the top of the screen. You're going to have a corner route, and you're going to essentially have a quick slant. Maybe it's not so quick. But before we get there, just read the coverage. You have two tucked into the boundary, including your halfback. So you are essentially have your pass strength set down this way. Oklahoma's combating it heavy, so you're just going to take what they know. And when they come up showing blitz down here at the bottom of the screen, you're just looking in this direction. Here's going to be the ball. Good touch pass. Touchdown. Now, I want to go back and watch this, okay? Because here's the little things. Watch how long this receiver is just going to go ahead and carry out and stutter at the top of his route. Ready? Watch. Brrr. Just that little extra hold had his DB focusing more on him, and the route timing was perfect enough that he wasn't going to get there with a pretty touch pass for six. Bang! Oklahoma has done a real good job routinely and regularly to go ahead and change the sight picture on the quarterback post-snap. And on this play, it's not going to be any different. You're going to see that these two safeties, they're aggressively going to have the field and take their halves respectively. Also, you're going to have a linebacker dropping coverage. They're only going to rush three. They're essentially playing cloud underneath. So, as a quarterback, once you notice that, a lot of defenders out in coverage. They're taking away a lot of the primary reads. There's a safety that's going to be right here, not pictured. So, what do you need to do? Either hit your check down or extend and make a play. And that's exactly what he does. Find somebody on the sideline as the play continues to unfold. Way to extend time in the pocket and way to deliver a strike. 